Good evening, viewers. And in this video, we are presenting LaGuardia Expressway Visual Runway 31 approach. It is divided into three parts. The first part will be the scenario setup and a little tiny bonus on aircraft positioning uh, setup. The second video will be a in, in cockpit recording and I will be voicing over uh, what happens. And in the last third of the video, it would be a replay from within with a outside perspective and i could add more commentary uh, without further ado let's jump right into scenario setup all right scenario setup first thing is to just select laguardia as your arrival airport so kilo lima golf alpha laguardia airport next select runway 31 as your arrival then zoom in into the vicinity and ah, I see so default the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator does not show RNAV points so what you do is click here open filters or just hit F just scroll all the way down very last line fix an RNAV position report just turn to on and backspace or closed turn that menu away now LaGuardia is here we want to start lined up on runway 4 I mean lined up with runway 4 but not on the actual runway so I'm looking for let's see maybe Pachu Paku Pachu so we'll select Pachu Paku as the departure so right now the game of course loads a line from Pachu to LaGuardia but if you remember the approach chart we turn right at dials so what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate dials click on it and click on add we have to do a right turn so I'm just going to pick Piero 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 <laughs> as the next um, nav point so once again locate Piero click on it click add that's the next waypoint and I'm going to add bear and bearer. I'm going to add bear to to the waypoint list. So um, we have a path lined up. Now, of course, we are not going to use the autopilot, and we're not flying this. This is just to get the flight plan of the visual approach in your uh, FM FMS FMC your your flight computer. <laughs> And um, you are still going to use Mark 1 eyeball to execute the approach. Of course, it's good to know where dials is because you have to cross there at 2500 feet or above and then execute your right turn. I'm going to set my time to like maybe later in the afternoon, 440. And uh, we are good to go. All right, a little bonus section here. I will show you how to set up the aircraft once you have clicked. Uh, fly and now ready to fly so very quickly once I click ready to fly I'm going to immediately engage active pause ready three two one ready to fly and active pause is set now first thing is to give it a bit of throttle to make sure I don't have the speed drop down too low first thing is to go to slew mode to, uh, press Y to do that now press F1 to drop to an altitude of uh, 2500 pressing F1 until 2000 oh if you, if you overshoot F4 to go back up so now I'm about 2500 next I'm going to rotate to um, 224 degrees um, rotate is on your number pad if you press 1 it rotates this way you press 3 on your number pad it rotates the other way just hit one of them until you're close to about 223 or thereabouts did I say 223? I am so sorry. We actually want 045. <laughs> My bad. 045. Okay, that makes sense. So, now another bonus section now is I'm going to set up my longitude. You could be in another aircraft, but I like the longitude. So, here we go. First things first is to select manual manage mode. And I'm just going to bring it down to like 220. 214 is fine. Thereabouts, yeah, maybe 210. And select auto throttle so that aircraft does not fly out of the Landing sky. Okay, it's, it will. Landing right? Landing okay, autopilot Landing off. Landing Flight director, autopilot on again. Landing 
synchronize heading we'll fly this heading for now synchronize altitude we'll fly 2500 don't forget to press B to um, calibrate your barometer next a little trick here is I want to get this landing gear thing is a bit irritating okay next I'm going to do a little trick here to load the localizer for frequency into the computer so waypoint info very quickly now select airport it's kilo lg a so kilo lima golf alpha for laguardia hit frequencies scroll on down runway four load it to nav one active oh just for kicks you can put runway three one load in active of nav two doesn't matter so if i hit control one I am on the localizer and about to intercept the glide slope for localizer 4 which you can use to guide yourself towards dials. Speed bugs all on, change my uh, V approach to 140 and of course PFD wind settings I like option 2, control 9 for the lights, turn all on, remove the taxi and wing inspection and I believe I'm mostly set, trim a little bit. External view. And ready to execute. So um, I'll end the section here and in the next section we will comment over the uh, in-flight video. Tower Cessna November 8675 Tango is 8 miles southwest with Kilo to land. Autopilot. My controls my aircraft. Cessna November 8675 Tango Tower. Make left traffic, runway tree one. Altimeter tree, zero decimal two two wind tree three four and one two. Auto throttle off. Make left traffic runway tree one Cessna seven five tango. Alright. LaGuardia feels in sight, but where is the expressway? Is that it? The bit of tarmac crossing about crossing across the uh, dashboard right about there that has to be it there's no other expressways from the west to the east and that's uh yeah it has to be it. let's do the turn now come to heading 085 or thereabouts flaps one i put flaps one out below 200 get us to 180 knots territory expressway is pretty obvious it's that it's the biggest ribbon of tarmac really through the metropolitan area heading is 086 come left a little bit but flaps two gears down clear to land runway tree one Cessna 75 tango We need to make a left turn at Flushing Meadows Park, and I believe it's that green patch ahead of me right there. I have photo, photo, photogrammetry. <laughs> that photo thing turned off, otherwise uh, the buildings will be looking like a disaster. I wonder if it really looks like this. Flaps full, get some trust. Make this turn on. Flaps full. Yeah, this has to be Flushing Meadows Park. Ooh, below 140. Let's make sure we don't fall. Fall below 140 knots. That's my desired approach speed. level a little bit this reminds me of Reagan's river visual let's move the head to see the runway up a little high here and go slow to go low but put the throttle back a little oops excuse me still a little too high watch the descent rate 500, 500 check Oh, not, let's not go below 140, throttle up a bit. Alright, good slope. 
good lineup just for cross to win. Right, we can let the speed fall a little bit. I'm gonna retard slowly so as to prevent a sudden nose up. Right. Watch the angle attack. Five degrees. Contact rear. Cross wind. Back front. Reverse thrust. Spoiler is good. Brakes come on below 80 knots. Reverse thrust off under 60. Break. We might make this turn. This is 75. Tango. Turn next taxiway. Oh, with pleasure. Flaps up. Strobes off. And off the runway. This is 75. Tango. Contact. Ground. On 127 decimal. 675. Going to 127 decimal 675 Cessna 75 Tango. Cessna November 8675 Tango Tower. Enter left traffic, runway 31. Altimeter 3, 0 decimal 2213341212. And here's a replay of what I just done with commentary. So we start off. Oh, in replay mode, I have to play the ATC window. Enter left downwind runway 31 Cessna 75 Tango. Yeah, so I still have the indirect ATC in the replay too. Okay, so more or less lined up with runway 4, but you know, I was looking up for the Long Island Expressway, which is a piece of tarmac going from west to east, and that is it. So, confirm with GPS your over dials and uh, make your right turn. Come to zero heading, come to heading 085 or thereabouts, just follow this pretty obvious strip of asphalt ribbon through the built-up area and now you look for the a green patch that breaks up the built-up area known as Flushing Meadow Park just conduct your, conduct your left turn there yeah where is the airport in relation Clear to land runway 31. Wind 304 at 22. Gears down, flaps 2. Clear to land runway 31, Cessna 75 Tango. And pardon me, let's get rid of the ATC window. And um, I like to go down to flaps 3 for maximum lift but at the price of increased thrust so I'll do that prior to the turn as I mentioned before it is like KDCA's river visual it's, uh, a late turn onto a really short final you're gonna keep your speed up but not too fast not too fast above your approach speed, but also not so low that you fall out of the sky. Good view of flaps full there. You can hear the thrust come on a bit as I compensate for the turn. And of course the flaps full extension. Yeah, at this point in time I was like thinking I better not screw up the turn otherwise I'll end up into the drink. So it's better to be too tight so that I can loosen up rather than too loose and have to tighten your turn. You can also hear the truss come up a bit because I was worried about falling out of the sky. And I, I did come close to 150 knots and you could hear me reduce truss to get speed down. 500. Go slow to go low so this is probably where I corrected my glide slope and when I do visual I always tend to end up a little low it's the black hole effect they call it but I'm glad the turn ended up well and I only had to do minor course corrections so easy on the flare retard throttles slowly or the thrust levers are retarded gradually in the touchdown on the touchdown marker I'm pretty happy myself with the crosswind control upon touchdown. Brakes come on under 80, reverse thrust turns off under 60, and, able, and, and was able to come off this taxiway. 
laps and spotless retracted then that's the end of the replay and I thank you all for watching and uh, Till next time, fly safe.